Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In this video, we're going to be going over importing Cinti sidekick characters into Unreal Engine as every single FBX pieces themselves. Not whole characters, but you can actually customize and kind of mix and match the pieces as you want. Let's go ahead and get started. But for this, you will need to download their Unity project because when you go over and download the sidekick characters, it only allows you to install a Unity package instead of just a full FBX package. Let's go ahead and check that out. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below. So first I have my third person template open in Unreal Engine. And I also have a bunch of sidekicks uh, over in my Unity project. So over here, I have Cinti sidekicks. When I go into it, you'll see that I have, um, I have fantasy knights, skeletons, goblins, and so on in the starter and all that. So the first thing that I want to do before importing all my FBXs is uh, what I like to do is just get the material in first. So I'm gonna head over to Cinti, click sidekick characters, go over to resources and then meshes. And we have this SK underscore base model. Uh, what I'm gonna do is right click and click show in Explorer and this will open up. So we'll see this SK underscore base model dot FBX. I want to go ahead and import that into Unreal Engine, but actually what I wanna do first is um, let's get a material in there. So I'm gonna go back up to the resources tab, go to textures, and I'll just go ahead and import this folder itself uh, for the entire textures. I'm gonna click show and explore again. And now let's drag and drop this into our Unreal Engine project. So I'll open my uh, sidekicks test project here. And I'm going to have Unity on the right side. So textures, let me actually create a new folder. So I'm going to go into my Cinti folder, right click new folder, and let's just call this sidekicks like so. So first I'll drag and drop all the textures in here. It's going to give me a bunch of errors because it probably has a lot of Unity things that are not fit for Unreal. But in here I have my T color map, basically yada, yada, yada. I'm going to right click T color map and create a material and just call this M underscore T underscore color map mat. And I want to double click to open this up, scroll all the way in. You're going to see it looks really blurry in the search. I'm going to look for filter and just select nearest. And now it's going to clear all these uh, pixelated lines. So now it looks really clear and it'll just make our material look uh, a little better. What I want to do next is actually go back to that where my import was. Let me actually hide this a bit. Uh, my unity layout is a little weird because I always have uh, split tabs here. But I'll go to resources and then meshes, SK base model, right click, show and explore. And now from here, I'll create another folder called meshes. And I'll just go ahead, double click to open this and import that SK base model FBX. And then just go ahead and we can select the material if we want. Um, so I'll just go ahead and click import after dragging and dropping this in. Uh, so it's going to be a simple white character. It looks really HD, looks really nice. I'm going to go ahead and let's actually just delete this and replace this reference. I'm going to go ahead and hit control shift save. And then I want to delete this material and actually replace the reference with that T underscore color map mat. I think this will make the character uh, look a little better. Let's just check it out. All right. So he looks pretty good after assigning that new material. Uh, let's go ahead and just import the FBXs. We'll fix the material up again one more time because the Fantasy Knights does come with one. But right now he looks like he's been uh, de-stressing as we're going to call it on this video. So let's go ahead and go to resources. I want to go to outfits, uh, Fantasy Knights. And I'm just going to actually, uh, let's go back up one and right click and open this in the, in the Explorer. So I'm going to right click Fantasy Knights click show in Explorer. Now I'm going to go into fantasy nights and I'm going to, let's see, sort it by type. And I want to import all the FBX. If you go further down, you'll see meta files. We don't need that. So I'm going to create another folder. I'll go ahead and call this fantasy nights, click enter. And I just want to import all the FBXs while assigning it to this SK base model skeleton. So I'm going to hit F2 and hit control C to copy the name of this so that when I go ahead and import all of these FBXs here on the right, um, let's see, this is the last one. Now I will do the following. So first I'm just going to assign the skeleton to this SK base model skeleton and go ahead and hit import. And that's pretty much it. 
Now you're going to see all these uh, kind of weird Lambert materials that it's creating. We're going to replace all those once it's done importing with the appropriate material. And it does come with one here, which is this sci-fi soldier color new. I want to right click and create this material and just call this M underscore uh, sci-fi. I'm not sure why it imports the sci-fi one, but it does look nice uh, from what I've seen. And I'll actually go back back to let me just drag and drop and see how it looks so as you can see here his eye color is uh pretty fixed it looks a lot better and this is gonna say fail to merge bones so i'm just gonna go ahead and click no uh each time this pops up this is actually gonna pop up quite a few times okay where's my no to all button but i'm gonna go ahead and just delete all of these materials there's gonna be so many uh you could probably if you're good at importing you probably know a much better way to do this than the way I'm doing it. I'm going to go ahead and hit delete. Now, if I don't save all, you'll notice that when I click delete, it doesn't let me replace these references on the bottom left here. So what I want to do is hit cancel and actually just click control shift, save, save all the files. And now once this is done saving, I'm going to hit the delete key again. And now it's going to allow me to, because those references are saved now, it's going to allow me to replace the references with that M underscore sci-fi material that we've created. So I'm just going to go over here on the bottom left and look for that M underscore sci-fi. And now everything's going to look a lot more clear instead of this boring gray statuesque look. So I'll click replace references and click OK. Now it's going to go through the asset one by one. I'm going to save over it. And while it's saving, you'll notice these colors changing. So for example, we have, let me full screen this. Yeah, so we have some nice red, blue coloring over here, some nice gray. It's not that all, it's not all the uh, boring statuesque color. You'll see the brown hair and so on. And you can change the materials um, kind of as you please. Sinti materials are pretty easy to change. I'm just going to go ahead and double click this sci-fi soldier and make sure that um, the filter is selected to nearest like so. And that looks good to me. And now what we want to do, it's actually pretty simple. So from here, we have our characters, we have our materials. And if we click right, if we right click on this and look for or find skeleton, it's going to be the same one that this character is assigned to. All we need to do is just attach these models onto this character. But first, let's get this character animating. So I'm going to head over to my third person blueprints, open that BP third person character. And I'm going to do this from scratch because I already created one for my previous video about importing whole characters. Uh, but let's go ahead and just do this from scratch. So from my BP third person character, I want to look for the ABP unarmed over here. And I want to retarget it with this SK base model. So I'm going to right click ABP unarmed and click retarget animations. And under the target skeletal mesh, I'm going to look for the SK base model. And you can click on these to kind of see how it looks. So these look really, really good to me. I'm going to leave this auto generate retargeter checked and overall looks really cool. I'm going to hit control a to select all the animations and click export animations. Now I'm going to go to my Cinti folder under sidekicks. I'll right click, create a new folder, call this, call this animations. And for the prefix, I'll do something like, um, SK. Oh no, that's skeletal mesh. Uh, I was going to do sidekicks, but okay. So prefix will be sidekicks new underscore. Uh, and now let's go ahead and now let's go ahead and export this. So it'll export every animation. I'll leave this as is click export. It's going to export everything, duplicate, export, retarget properly. And now it's going to be all these cool new animations for my Cinti base model. So from here, what I want to do is just go back to my default pawn class. And now let's try a couple things. So first I want to change the skeletal mesh asset to um, my SK base model here. And then I want to change the ABP to the sidekicks new ABP unarmed. So now you're going to see it's a standing working character, but let's actually go ahead and just run around with this, try it out, make sure you do assign it to your default pawn class. So when I go ahead and hit play, you're going to see a very nice looking character just running around and looking over yonder and yeah, overall really cool looking character. So now let's just apply some of these um, models or FBXs. Oh wait, something's wrong. When I land it, it T poses. So let's go ahead and fix that. So this is a great error that we ran into. 
is a pretty simple error to fix. So in order to fix that landing T pose, I'm just gonna go to where I put my animations. So Cinti, sidekicks, animations. I'm gonna look for the land animation. So you can see it's already in a T pose. And when I look at it, it looks fine. But for this, I need to just change the additive and the additive type will be local space. And now he's in the ground. And I wanna change the base pose type for, let's do a selected animation frame. So this looks uh, appropriate to me. Now let's go ahead, try this out, land, boom. He plays the animation and he's not T-posing anymore. So that's an easy fix. So now from here, what I can do is just go over to my BP third person character right here. And I can simply just start applying the skeletal meshes that I want. Now, ideally in a game, you want certain parts to be armor, certain parts to be uh, weapons equipable. When you do that, it will automatically assign in the appropriate place as long as you have the correct matching AVP or animation blueprint because we've assigned the skeleton of these FBX models to the same skeleton as uh, what our character is using, right? So it's going to be a complete one-on-one -on -one one for one matching animation. So let me show you a good example. So what I'm gonna do is head over to my mesh, which is just surrounding outlining my body. I'm gonna click this add button in the components, look for skeletal mesh, and let's call this something like chest. And then I wanna look for a chest piece. Now the naming convention is a little, maybe a little hard to get adjusted to. So I'll just do this chest piece, this SK Fant Knight one so on uh let's go ahead and just select skeletal mesh asset and look for this so now you're gonna see it looks a little weird when i uh run around with this it's not it's kind of clipping through my body it's not exactly you know the dream triple a level game we want so all i need to do in order to fix this is just select the same anim class that i use for my character so over here, I have sidekicks new, and now it's gonna kind of automatically adjust and play in animation with my character. So now when I go ahead and hit compile and save and run, uh, no matter where I go, no matter how I jump, it will just perfectly fit with my character and it looks really nice. And this same concept can be applied to all the models that you create. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click Control D to duplicate this. I'll just call this one and then I'll keep spamming control D, you're going to see all these numbers pop up and I'm going to go through these and just apply a bunch of uh, different models. But yeah, so if you were to add some kind of like inventory system and equip these as armor pieces, um, it would attach appropriately to your mesh. As long as all your Sinti characters are using the same base model uh, skeleton, which they should be. All right. So another thing here. So when I go ahead and attach this helmet, you're going to see that it kind of clips through my beard and my character. So in order to counter that issue, uh, what I need to do is go back to unity and over here we have in the resources tab, sidekick characters, resources, meshes, and species. We have our base model of our human skeletons and goblins. So I'll go ahead and open the human folder, click show in folder, and I wanna go into this human folder, sort by FBX type, and I'm gonna import it into my Unreal Engine project. So I'm gonna import new folder and just call this humans, and just drag and drop all the base heads and types in this folder like so. And I will assign it that same SK base model skeleton. Go ahead and click import so that it does assign in the appropriate spot. And you'll be able to adjust hairstyles, uh, eyebrows, texture stuff. I'm just gonna click no. I'll assign my own texture to it. All right, so with all the human stuff imported, we're gonna see a ton of materials. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, material name that's being used in this SK base model. I just call it M underscore sci-fi. So if I were to, let's say, drag a head piece and a hair piece here, it should be the same. Yeah, so brown here, and then over here we have the uh, tanned bright skin. So I'll just go ahead and actually just use that for all of these. So now I'll select all the materials. I'll control click on these to unselect them, click delete, and then I'm gonna look for the M underscore sci-fi. 
quick replace reference. Yes. Go ahead and hit save. And now we have our head pieces. Um, so basically I'm going to just add these onto the parts of my BP character. So when I go to my world settings, if you don't have that enabled, go to window, make sure world settings is checked. Go to my BP third person character, double click to open this up. Uh, let's go to the viewport to just check how it is. What I want to do is select the mesh itself, and then I'm going to look for render. Now for visible, I'm just going to turn this off and now it's going to be an invisible character. You'll see the hair piece that I already added here. So I did add this mesh uh, earlier, but it probably was invisible because of that. And then I can just go up the ladder and add the uh, head piece. So let's go ahead and let's look for a head piece like so. So it's going to look a little scary. Uh, let's see if I can add some eyes or something. Cause what is this? I have to add one eye at a time. Okay. Okay. There we go. I got both eyeballs in. Oh, I need a nose. Okay. I was like, what is missing? I need nose and ears. All right. This is crazy. The amount of, uh, <laughs> modular stuff that you can do, man, it's so time consuming. All right. He got his perfect chiseled nose. Let me go ahead and add some ears. Um, Okay, you know what? I get it. There's elven ears. There's goblin ears. You can make them half and half. You can do whatever you want. So this looks pretty uh, too much forehead. All right, so I've gone ahead and added uh, two hairstyles on him. I might be missing a few things off his face because... All right, so anyways, well, you get the point. I'm basically just going to keep adding and adding and adding all these pieces. You can really customize these to really your heart's content. Like, There's an insane amount of customizations that you can do. And if I were to do something like add a full on headpiece, kind of like this one here. So let's just go ahead and I'll replace the nose with this full headpiece. You're going to want to disable the nose and the hairs. So let's go ahead and this is why you're supposed to label things appropriately. So now he looks really cool. All right. So I added some shoulder pieces. Now he looks pretty cool. He's definitely missing a few pieces. There are elbow, elbow pads. There are knee pads. And he's... These pants are not really fitting for him. Okay. And so on. And you can really customize it to your heart's content. This is just fantasy nights. And there are a ton of ton of XBF FBX models that you can import. And then don't forget, you have to import the races as well separately, which is kind of what we went over here when we imported the humans. And that pretty much covers our uh, tutorial on how to import the FBXs by themselves. And you'll see that because they all have that stinty sidekicks or Sidekicks new underscore ABP underscore unarmed that we mess with. Uh, all of these do work as expected and it looks really nice. I love seeing this in Unreal Engine. It looks really clean. And thanks for watching Code of the Road. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.